Okay, in this circuit we're going to solve for the operating point of an FET circuit, sort of as drawn right here. And what that means is what is the VDS and the ID, so the voltage um, from drain to source, and the current through the uh, FET. Um, we're given this circuit. We're also given two parameters, VTN, which is 1 volt, and KM, which is 25 microamps per volt squared. Both of these are will usually be given to you in any sort of uh, circuit problem, right? VTN is the threshold voltage of the FET. That's when basically the FET turns on. If you don't know what that means, I would definitely go back and check your uh, lecture and recitation notes about um, FETs from the past few weeks. KN is a coefficient related to how the FET um, sets the current through it. Uh, again, that's usually going to be, at least in our class, given to us. And for this circuit, we're going to assume that the FET ends up working in saturation mode, which implies a very specific thing about how the current through it is set by outside voltages and other things. Uh, so what we need to do is figure out VDS and ID. Um, before we even do that, we need to just maybe annotate what is the, the D or drain and what is the source, the S, or what is the G, the gate, of the FET. And when I go in and look at that, I know right away this is always the gate. right? And in terms of determining what's the drain in the source, the drain in an n-channel FET, which is what this is, is always going to be at a higher potential than the source. Okay, we'll never use them in the other direction. Um, we can sort of ascertain that that's the case right here because we have a ground, let's actually even call this node E0, then this goes up by 10 volts and then it's going to drop back around right here. So there's going to be a potential drop through the FET in this direction. So this is going to be the drain, this is going to be the source. That also means that the current, whenever we define ID, that's always flowing from drain to source. That's going to be I, D is going to look like that. That's good. Now we have our directions. And, you know, I wouldn't obsess too much about over like, you know, oh, is the drain and source ever going to be in some weird direction? Generally speaking, that'll be specified or you could maybe ask about it or what I just went through my sort of order of operations is a good way to figure it out. I don't think, no one's going to really, I think, try to set that up as a trick on an exam question or something just as a FYI. Anyway, so we figured out what the gate, the source, and the drain are. A couple other things to maybe note here, right? Um, voltages we usually care about when working with the FET are VGS and VDS. And in this particular case, right, remember this is equal to VG minus VS, and this is equal to VD minus VS. But in this circuit, VS is zero, right? So that sort of simplifies some of our math that we need to do out, or number merging. Okay. And then other than that, I think we're good to go. So we're going to, again, assume that the system is working in saturation. And pretty much any time we're solving something with a FET in 6002 as of fall 2018, we'll assume it's in saturation, unless we're doing something as like a FET as a switch model. And what that means is when it's in saturation, the FET has a the current ID through it is based off of this expression, right? KN over 2 times VGS minus VT n squared. This is if it's in saturation. Saturation has a couple assumptions. Those are if VGS is greater than VT n, so it's the, the FET is on, and VDS is greater than VGS. Okay. Now we're we're asserting that it isn't saturation. That's sort of told to us by the problem. But this would always be these are always good things to just check. I think right, especially if you want to go and do more advanced things with FETs, right? Anyway, so this is dictating our current. We want to figure out ID. That's one of the things we want to ultimately solve for. Um, KN and VTN we already have. We don't have VGS. It's a little frustrating. So we need to figure that out. How do we figure out VGS? Well, that's going to be coming from this half of the circuit right here. So we need to solve for that first. And generally speaking, in a lot of FET circuits, there's sort of a figure out the gate voltage first, and then that leads to the next half. So this half of the circuit sort of causes this half of the circuit to work in a certain way. And this is how they're usually used in actual devices, too. So we need to figure out what is VGS, or particularly what is VG going to be, because VS is 0. And we can sort of look at this and say, ah, this circuit maybe looks familiar. Is this possibly a voltage divider? 10 volts resistor, resistor, a wire coming out of the middle. Um, it will be a voltage divider, a perfect voltage divider, if and only if the current going into the, out of this branch, I mean, is zero. And is it? Oops, let's say I equals zero, right? And it actually is. And the reason for that is because the FET in our class 
current into the gate is always zero. Just like uh, in op amps, for example, current into the inputs are always zero for a actually not unrelated reason. But in our FET, it is a current in IG is always zero. You can just assert that. And we can always remind ourselves that a little bit too because this part looks like a capacitor, right? And that's actually for a reason too. FETs from the perspective of the gate look capacitive. So this current is zero, which means the voltage VG is going to be based off of just a straight up voltage divider. And we can go ahead and calculate that right away. That will be VG equals 10 volts times 300K, just the bottom resistor over the total resistance, 300K plus 700K. And this simplifies down to just three volts, right? So I'm going to circle that and just store it for a little bit later. Now VG equals VGS, we know also, because VS is zero. And I can't write today. So that means we can actually immediately go and solve for current. So ID will equal 25 e to the negative 6, or 25 times 10 to the minus 6 amps per volt squared, over 2 times 3 volts, VGS, minus 1 volt for the threshold voltage, squared. Now what does this actually solve out to? Um, 25 times 10 to the minus 6 amps per volt squared over 2. This is end up, what, 3, 2, 2 squared, so this is actually a 4. Cancel, cancel, this turns into a 2. So actually, ID, um, and the volts cancel, obviously, in units, ID will equal 50 times 10 to the minus 6 amps, or ID will equal 50 microamps, however you want to write that out. So that's one of our solutions. Good. Now what we need to do is then figure out what is VDS. And there, there's a few ways you could go about doing this. One is you could do the load line analysis, and that's that's a thing we could do. Here we could actually just sort of analyze it um, just with numbers and equations. I think that's a little bit quicker. Um, so we can go and then say, all right, so given that ID is 50 microamps, right, or ID is some value, what is VDS going to be? And we can see now VDS is going to be based off of what these two other components contribute to the system, right? It's The transistors had its say. Now we need to figure out what these two want to say together. And we can come up with an equation for what VDS will be given ID using KVL, right? We can march around this loop and do a sort of KVL equation. So when I do that, I would actually say, and I always, um, I'll, let's start in the lower right, and I'm going to march around it and say minus 10. And let's call this, because um, I know the current's flowing this way, so it might be just good to just do VR like this. You can actually define it however you want. You just got to watch your signs. Um, and then VDS will be that way. That'll be good. So what we could do is we could come up with a KVL that says minus 10 plus VR plus VDS must equal 0. Minus 10 volts. Moving around the loop, plus VR plus VDS equals 0 volts. This is traditional KVL. We've been doing this since like week 1 or 2. Um, however you want to arrive at it, you could go the other way around. Just got to be consistent with your voltages and the directions, and you should end up with an algebraically, algebraically equivalent expression. And we can say, oh, okay, so now we have this expression. VR, we don't know, but we can say VR right, will actually equal ID times 100K. Right. And this is good because now we can actually just, uh, I'm going to take this down below so we can keep working with it. Good. Um, we can then substitute that stuff in. So it'll be, uh, move the 10 over there actually. So let's do, um, let's move a couple things around. So we'll say VDS equals 10 volts. I'm moving this over to here, minus VR, or VDS will equal 10 volts minus ID times 100 kilo ohms. All right, and we can then go and look at this again. So VDS, actually sub in some values, equals 10 volts minus 50 times 10 to the minus 6 times 100 times 10 to the 3 equals 10 volts. Whoops, that's not an equal. Minus what? 50,000, right? 
gosh, I can't do any math today. 5,000 times 10 to the minus 3, all right? Yep, okay, so that's basically just 5 then, right? So 10 volts minus 5 volts VDS will equal 5 volts. Good. Let's actually circle that in blue because that's we're done, right? Because VDS is 5 volts, ID is 50 microamps. And the thing I do, just because I'm weird, is I would actually go back and make sure, did this VDS um, follow the requirements needed for saturation? Even though we said it was a given, I just that's just me being me, right? So I would go back and look and say, oh, is VDS greater than VGS? We found out VGS was 3, VDS ends up solving for 5, we're good to go. And a lot of times, you know, if you keep working with transistors and things like this, working with them and designing with them is kind of, it's very, uh, it's like an iterative process, right? You almost make a guess and you check does it solve out that way. It's sort of like when you're solving differential equations, you guess and then test them and then if they work, it's good. So anyways, that's how you would solve this circuit.